Good evening and welcome back to another edition of the Brew Club. If you uh, joined us last week, you'll know that uh, we started on our all-grain beer. So we can call this show All-Grain Beer Part 2 because we're going to pick up right where we left off. Uh, Bill Reddy is here. He's uh, the owner of Brewery Lane in uh, Coker's Meadow Plaza, Torby Road in St. John's, uh, replacing Ken, right. I guess. And, uh, uh, Bill has come in to show us how to make this all-grain beer, and, and uh, if, as I said, if you were with us last week, uh, we've prepared, I guess, what would we call this? The, this is the mash. We've this is the mash, sure. Uh, yeah. some, we, we ground up some grains, and uh, we uh, set it aside for about an hour to let the starches to be converted into sugar. Convert butter. into some fermentable sugar. Right. Basically, what we're doing here, folks, I guess, is, is making a beer, what, what would be a, a, what comes in the can, when, right. when you're the, the malt extract, right. except it's not an extract. We're we're uh, we're making, making the, the stuff that they, that those manufacturers would boil down and put into an extract. Exactly. Wouldn't they? Yes. Yeah. We're making the, we're, we're making the real thing here. Though. Yeah. We've used uh, three or four different kinds of grains. We've used some English two-row uh, malt, some right. crystal malt, and some chocolate malt. And it's just uh, it, it's uh, the those ingredients are just the ones I guess that you've picked. That's this right. is a recipe yeah. for an, uh, an English uh, brown ale. English brown ale. We're making English brown together. ale, which is a mm -hmm. sort of a light, uh, light tasting, mm -hmm. you know, low alcohol beer, around mm -hmm. three and a half percent. And it's a great, okay. a great thirst quencher. So we're most of the way through, or I shouldn't say we're most of the way because we've got a bit of ways to go yet. But uh, when we left last week, we were ready to start sparging. Right. Tell us what uh, tell us what sparging is. Well, sparging is actually uh, we're going to spray. Uh, little droplets of water over this uh, bit of green we have here. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of that is to wash the malt sugars uh, from the grains. Mm -hmm. And we're going to then collect that in, in a boiling pot. Okay. We're going to add our hops and we're going to boil it up for about an hour and then we'll have our, uh, we'll have our base for our, our beer mix. A base for the beer mix. Okay, well, we might as well get started. We've got uh, about, what, about two or three gallons of... Uh yeah, we got about, we're making a 12 liter batch. Hot so we, water. So we got about 12 or 13 liters of hot water. Mm -hmm. uh, the water should be around 180 degrees Fahrenheit, or okay. I think that's around 78 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Like in, I guess like in the last part of the process where this had to, uh, had to sit at 62 yes. degrees or, or about 150 degrees, is the temperature of this just as important? Uh, the temperature is important, yes, because uh, if you have it too hot, you may actually extract some uh, some flavors from the husk there, which be you know uh, flavors you don't want in your beer. Off if it's too mm -hmm. cold, you may not get a, a uh, you may may not you know wash enough of the sugars from your from okay. your uh, grain and uh, you end up with a, a smaller yield. So temperature seems to be the the key, uh, the some of the finer points in doing an all grain kit versus doing uh, just a, a regular exactly, malt extract yes. kit. Yeah, temperatures are very important in uh, all grain brewing, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Actually, you know, like anyone who's interested in all grain brewing, brewing uh, mm -hmm. it may be helpful to pick up a, uh, a good book on it. Uh, mm -hmm. One that comes to mind is The Joy of Home Brewing. Okay. Because, uh, you know, it's hard to really, uh, sh on a show like this, to show, you know, everything that's, uh, yeah. that's going to happen, right? Sure, but, sure. Uh, okay. But where temperatures are very important. Just, uh, I guess, before we close that off, where, where would, we get, uh, would we get that at any brew shop, I guess? Well, at the brew shops or at the bookstores. Any, a lot of bookstores have, have, have a good, uh, good selection of home brewing books okay. now. And as, as well, they can drop by the store and just ask an expert. That's right, yeah. Like okay. us, <laughs> ask me and I'll help you out. Uh, okay. No problem. And well, let's, as let's a matter of fact, we, we, do have, uh, we do have leaflets, uh, mm -hmm. you know, which we can okay. give people free of charge. So if you need help with doing this, if, if you've been doing, uh, uh, you know, kit beers uh, for, for the last little while and you feel like stepping up i guess uh, oh yes yeah yeah great don't be means, afraid it's a uh, ask great, the question there's a great bit of fun you gotta you'll end up with a you know far more better control over this so what are we going to do we're going to sparge. okay first before we do that Mike, okay we should run a bit of the uh, sweet wort off because uh where we just put this in the bucket now it's full of starches and mm -hmm. and pieces of the uh of the uh, grains so we're going to okay. We're going to recycle it, just uh, recycle a bit of that back through the grain bed. Through here? Yeah. So okay, using this. I don't know if the camera can get a shot of this, but there's a tube running out of this bucket. Right. Just like there's a tube running out of the bucket up on the uh, okay. counter. And we'll open that up, and we'll take some of this off, like so. Now, this is all the liquid that we put into the mash while it was... Uh, yeah, that's the liquid. That's the water we used uh, at the beginning of the mesh to, uh, to aid in the starch conversion. Right. Okay. Or the sugar conversion from starch, I should say. Okay. 
Now it's important, Mike, that you don't let this run off too fast because you can get uh, uh, something what we call a stuck mesh. A stuck? A stuck yeah. mesh, which is basically uh, okay. uh, the greens tighten up here. Uh, the green bit tightens up and uh, your sparge water has, has difficulty get, getting through it. Okay. So the idea is to, uh, you know, slowly run it off. Okay. Now you pass that to me. There you go. I don't know if you know this, but there's a lot of, uh, lot of kernels and sort of a cloudy look to it, right? Sure. So we're going to try to... It's really dark, yeah. We're going to try to uh, recirculate this back through the green, green bed. Okay. And by doing this, you'll end up uh, with less uh, you know, haze-forming particles in your right. in your finished beer. Okay. So it's a good, good practice to do it. I guess, yeah, I guess clearing a beer like this, where we're starting out with grains and where we don't have the benefit of what the manufacturers were and how they made the, the extract. Exactly, yes. We have to be a little bit more careful in terms of uh, making yeah, well, the beer uh, go know, clear and things like that, which is why we have things like Irish Moss exactly. on Exactly, the thing about making it from scratch, you're in total mm -hmm. control of the finished beer. Right. And there's no, uh, you know, there's no manufacturer uh, helping you along the way. Right. So uh, I think we'll do one more. We'll one. do one more? Yep. Okay, so we'll repeat this process. Now, as you know, it's coming out a bit clearer now, see? Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think that'll do it. That's enough? Yeah. All right, just finish running that Looks off. like it's coming clear, so uh, uh, as soon as it starts to come clearing, you can stop, uh, you can okay. stop the recycling part and the recirculating part, and we can get on with the actual sparging then. Okay. A little bit more equipment involved in this. Obviously, you need a couple of, uh, you know, more buckets. Uh, right. This tubing looks like a. Uh, okay. Well, this here is a. a uh, more equipment. This here, this, you know, I mean, you can actually. The idea mm -hmm. is that you're going to, you want to wash, the sugars from the grain bed. Mm -hmm. Now, there's many ways you can do this. You know, a lot of people hook up their own apparatus. You know, uh, you can actually even use a, a an actual kitchen strainer. It's a lot, right. maybe a lot more or less efficient than this, mm -hmm. but uh, and some people, you know, get double buckets and burrow a zillion little holes in the bottom and use that as a, as a strainer, right? Okay. But uh, the idea is you want to keep the, uh, the grain uh, retained on, on some sort of a, uh, a strainer while you, uh, you know, pour run, run the liquid run through, the liquor through it, through, right? right? I guess the, the key thing here is you have to improvise. You have to improvise. Uh, yeah. You can use what you got. You can go out. And you can buy equipment that's prepared for it. Because I've noticed that there's. There, there are manufacturer's labels on the, on this bucket, and what it is is just a regular bucket. It looks like with yeah, with this a hole punch in it with a tube to come out. Exactly, so that this, sort of this thing. Is, so. uh, and this little apparatus here is uh, is our sparging mm -hmm. arm. What happens when the hot water runs through this? It right. sprinkles. Uh, uh, well, let's fine. let's run it through and yep. see what happens. Okay, it sits on top of the bucket like there so. There you go. Now we just open our valve, and in a minute, take a look at this, folks. In. It's just running hot water all the way through it. Now, Mike, we're going to have to take our pot and put it on the floor because we're going to want to uh, collect this, the liquid from this now. This okay, what we're going Automat to as we go? Yeah. Okay, so we'll put this pot down here. And, we'll just and we're going to run all two gallons or yeah, two we're going to, gallons well, we're through? Yeah, we're going to run, uh, we're making uh, about two and a half gallons of beer, so we're going to run two and a half gallons of uh, Okay, of right, water. of course. Okay, and as you can see, that's... Uh, that's running out there into our pot. Yep. Now again, it's important that uh, this is this you don't do any of this too fast because right. if you you know put the water pour the sparge water through too fast, you'll uh, you'll be leaving a lot of sugars behind. Uh, what you'll do, you'll, right. you'll you'll create little pockets in the uh, in the grain bed, which okay. and the water will run through the little pockets in the grain bed and won't uh, come in contact with all the grain, and you'll end up uh, getting a very low yield. Okay. Because you got to look at, you know, while we're getting, what we want here Take is Take your time, be patient. Yes. And you'll end up with a better product. Because what we want to do is get the maximum amount of, uh, of malt sugars from this grain bed. We don't, we want to leave, you know, very little behind. Okay. This is going to take about, uh, that, that's flowing through there. That's going to take about another 15, 20 minutes or so. Yes. So we're going to take a short break and uh, we'll be right back when uh, that's run through. Are we going to run it through again? No, this is, we this run it through is, once, and when we come back now, we'll uh, start to boil. We'll add our hops, and we'll start boiling. Uh, unlike your beer kits, this has to be boiled for at least an hour. 
Okay. Okay, because... Okay. Uh, so when we come back from the break, we'll get into some, uh, some things that, uh, some processes in, in the all-grain beer making that might be a little more familiar to you because we've done them with, uh, with kits in the past. Exactly. Yes. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Most Canadians aren't aware of an important fact regarding alcohol. A standard 12-ounce mug of regular strength beer, a 5-ounce glass of table wine, a 1.5-ounce drink of spirits are equal in alcohol content. Think about it. A drink is a drink is a drink. Remember, to a breathalyzer, they're all the same. A message from the Association of Canadian Distillers. Welcome back to the Brew Club. And as you can see, we have taken our sparged water or sparged, what do we call this at this point? This is called sweet wort now, Mike. Sweet wort. So we've sparged out, we've separated the, uh, the, the uh, fermentable sugars and we've separated, we've ran some water through the, through the grains and we've ended up with this. We've put it on the stove and it's been, it's just starting to boil now. It's about 15 liters in here, I guess, right? 14, yes. 15 yeah, liters? Yeah, it's about 14 to 15 liters, and we'll end up after everything is uh, boiled. We had to boil this for about a, an hour now, Mike. About an hour. And during that boiling process, of course, there's going to be a lot of the water, liquid boil off. Okay. And we'll end up, uh, when it's finished, with about uh, 12 liters of, of uh, sweet wort. Okay. And, uh, and now, you folks at home who have watched us do the kits over the last several weeks and things like that, you'll probably recognize a few of the steps. We've got some, uh, some hops here, and we've got some Irish moss. Uh, this is a new ingredient, perhaps, that the folks at home haven't seen before. This is That's used right, yes. to clear it later on. Is that right? Yeah, this is, in, uh, this is added joined in the Irish oil, moss. and the idea is to uh, end up with a clearer finished product. Now, we've got, why do we have the scale out here? Is this because you've just measured off the amount of hops that's in each one of these cups? Okay, well, yeah, this, re this is a recipe uh, that we're... Uh, the recipe that I've uh, sort of made up here. Mm -hmm. And we're using different types of hops, different, uh, we have a Golding's hops here, and yep. we have Fuggles hops. Fuggles. Fuggles, yeah. So what okay. I've done, I've weighed off the hops because I'm using 15 grams of uh, Golding's hops for the boil, and 15 grams of Fuggles hops for the boil. Fuggles hops. Yes, and then I'm gonna use uh, eight grams of Golding's hops uh, for the finish. Finish I, I, I can't help but think of the Muppets when I think of Fuggles hops. Right, I don't yes. know why, but it just, it just comes to mind. Actually, anyway. Fuggles is a very old uh, English hop and is very popular in English uh, beer making. Yeah? Yeah. So we're going to add these uh, to, to the boil. If you remember when we were doing the, uh, uh, that Morgan's kit a couple of weeks ago, this is pretty much what we did. We wait for this to start to boil, we added some hops, waited till the end of the boil. We only boiled that for about 30 minutes. Right. Why are we boiling this for an hour? Well, uh, for one thing, uh, with uh, the kits you've done before, they do have hop uh, flavoring, hop bittering added to them. Right. And with this, we're going, we, we've got to uh, get all our bittering from the uh, fresh hops we're going to add. Okay. So it takes about an hour of boiling for the uh, resins to break down and to sort of, you know, uh, mix in with the, uh, with the mix. With okay. The, uh, well, this has started to boil now, so we're we ready to add some hops. Okay, we can start adding our boiling hops now. This is mm -hmm. our finishing hops, so we leave that to one side until we're ready. Okay. But you can add these now. The boiling hops, this is the... This is the Fuggles. Fuggles hops, folks. Right. Here we go. Just dump them in. <coughs> yeah. Give it a stir. And this is the Golding's hops. The, the Golding's hops. hops. Yep. This is for the boil as well. Now, the hops we're using are in pelletized form. You can yep. also get the hop... Uh, hop cones, which some people like to use. Right. These hops are easier, a lot easier to work with because you don't have to use straining bags or sieves to strain the hops out. Right. right. Okay. And you'll notice it, that, it, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but there's almost a green tinge yes, now where yes. it was brown. That, those hops have... Yes. Uh, so the pelletized hops now have, uh, have I guess, have uh, dissolved. They've dissolved their, almost immediately. Yep. And they're... Uh, okay. And as we said, this is going to boil now for about an hour. We're going to, we're going to go through that rather quickly. So uh, uh, we'll just uh, add, we've just added our hops and we just let that go now. That's right. What's the next thing that's going to happen? Another thing I should mention, Mike, mm -hmm. uh, the difference in uh, making an all grain uh, brew uh, from a kit brew is that an all grain brew, you boil a whole volume of wort, you, like uh, you boil it, we got to boil the whole 13 liters. So if we were making a five gallon or a, 
a five exactly. gallon we'd have to buy four, a, so about six gallons of, uh, of water. We'd have to okay. boil the whole six gallons. I guess that's why probably this is made in half batches. <laughs> that's right, that's okay. why we made in half batch today. But you can if you have something that you can boil six oh, yes, gallons yes. of water in. Oh yes, and uh, you know, there's ways to get around it. Some people use mm -hmm. two boilers, so there is, if you don't have a large enough boiler, there is ways to get around it so you can make the food. Okay, and as we can see, we'll batch. just get a shot of that there, it's starting to boil. There it goes. Yeah, so that has a boil vigorously now for the next hour. Okay, and as you can see, we've got a nice rolling boil on the go here now with this and uh, it's been going for about 25 minutes so 25 minutes my kiss roughly yeah. uh at this point you can see i don't know if we can get a shot uh on the uh, inside here you can see a lot of the hops are, are sort of ringing the inside and uh, right some yes. of that, that hop pellets it's boiled down a little bit the level is i mean but we are going to boil off a, a few liters of this is oh that yes right? yes yeah, there will be right. some boil off so it's going about it's been going for about 25 minutes what we've got here now is this a is uh, about how much? One and a half cups? One and a half cups, yes, right. What is it? That's uh, high maltose syrup. Okay, what's that uh, going to do for us? It's a sugar substitute. Uh, it's uh, one thing will increase the alcohol content. Right. And it'll also uh, sort of make, give the beer a little bit of a lighter body. Okay. And if we use... So how is this different than, say, corn sugar or honey? Say, or just okay, well, this is a blend of, uh, of uh, different sugars, dextrose, uh, mm -hmm. maltose. Yeah. Maltose sugar is the uh, sugar that, uh, that is naturally found in, in malt extract, or in our case, our, our water. Okay. And, it's, uh, and there's also some unfermentables, some dextrins in this malt, high maltose syrup, mm -hmm. which means that they will not be fermented by the yeast, and which gives the, body, uh, the beer a little bit of a smoother, rounder taste. And, Okay. And more body. Okay, so we'll just we'll add this, and that's got to go, I guess, now for another. Oh, well, yeah, we well, got like to boil about 25 minutes into our bowl, so we've got about another 35, 40 minutes to go. Exactly. Yes. We want to give that a stir because that stir. that stuff will go right to the bottom and yeah, stick on stir it, it on now. a really high heat. That won't be long uh, dissolving because of the heat, there, of course. Okay. And uh, and I'm just gonna. And just before, uh, about 15 minutes before the boil, we'll uh, add our hops, our finishing hops. Okay. That will do the job. And I'm just go I'm gonna put the lid back on this only because we wanna get it back up to a rolling boil. Right. A good, fast boil, exactly. right? But you yeah. gotta be careful, Mike, that it doesn't, you know, watch. Keep your eye on this it. This is a case where, where a, a watched pot is a good yes, thing. Yes, exactly, because okay. there can be an awful mess if it happens to foam up and and then mm -hmm. go all over the stove and the countertop and it'll be a real disaster. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're now about, we're roughly about 50 minutes, almost an hour into this. We've decided, we're, we, when we say it boils for about an hour, there, there's, some, there's some play there, right? Oh yeah, well an hour would be maybe, you know, the minimum amount you want to boil it, but you can mm -hmm. boil it for a, an hour and a half, you know, right. up to three hours or some, yeah. d depending on the type of uh, brew you're making. Right. We'd want to, ideally you want to keep a nice rolling boil on this, and if we can get a shot of the uh, of how it's going there now, that's not boiling very hard. We, oh. we want a good <coughs> rolling, which is why we've been sort of keeping the cover on it. Notice here on the cover, you can see a lot of the hops that have boiled off. Now, you might, you know, from time to time, you might want to just Scrape that off and scrape around the inside of the pot. Just get it back down in there. That's right, right? because it won't, the, won't do any harm. Yeah, it's not doing any good up stuck to the side of the stuck pot. Stuck to you the side of the pot. Want to get it into the uh, yeah. into the boil so you'll extract as most you know, yeah. as much flavor and and the bitterness from it as possible. Yeah, wouldn't hurt to give it a stir every once in a while, I suppose. Yep. And uh, but the important, I guess, the important thing is to keep it at a good rolling boil. We want a bit of the liquid to boil off. We started off with this pot. It was, I, I guess, roughly. This is a, you know, it's a, it was about a half inch. That's right. Higher than it was. So a lot of the liquid is boiled off. Yep. We want it ideally down to about 12 liters. Mm -hmm. Right. It's getting pretty close to now because there is going to be mm -hmm. some left behind in the. Uh, yeah. We, when we uh, siphon it from the pot into the yeah. fermenter. So we're getting near the end of our boil. So what yep. what do we uh, what okay. do we want to do with this next? So next, uh, Mike, we'll add our uh, finish hops. Finish hops? This is right. the Golding's finish hops? Yeah. 
And this by adding hops at this uh, this stage of the boil, uh, mm -hmm. you're looking mostly to get the flavor from the hops, mm -hmm. uh, because during the uh, during the boil, uh, a lot of the volatile oils and and yep. which which give uh, you know uh, beer its flavor right. and aroma are boiled off. Okay. So by adding late in the boil like this, there's yep. less chance of those uh, hop oils to be boiled off and. Uh, to get more flavor uh, in, in, in the final beer. So if you like more hop flavor in your beer, you'd add a little bit more maybe? Exactly, add more okay. hops. Add and I guess this is, this. It's and again, uh, you probably recognize this step because when we were doing the Morgan's kit a few weeks ago, we added the, uh, it was, I think it was about an ounce or two of leaf hops, ca the Cascade hops right, that, yes, we, yes. that we put in a bag. We're just adding more pellets. At this yeah, point. we're adding more pellets. Right. Okay. So that's almost done. So we right. leave that for about another, yeah. how long? But before we do that, we're going to add our okay. uh, Irish moss now. Irish moss. Okay, now okay. let's let's talk a little bit about this again. This is uh, seaweed. Irish moss is a seaweed, yes. Okay. It's, uh, it acts as a coagulant. Mm -hmm. And what, I, what it does is helps uh, join the ball. Their uh, uh, protein from the malt is uh, sort of coagulated and, and clumped together. Right. Uh, this this Irish moss speeds up that process, makes it more effective. Okay. And the idea is to, to to get the protein matter to clump together, so it will uh, you know settle out of the um, uh, brew and in, into the bottom of the pot, and we leave that behind when we siphon the beer or the uh, wort off the off the sediment. Okay. And how long? So how much longer now? Should after we put in the. Uh Irish moss. Irish moss is about ten to fifteen minutes. About maybe. another ten to fifteen yes. minutes. Yep. Okay, so we'll just put that cover back on there like that because we want to get again. This isn't the most efficient stove in the world that we've got here. Right. Yes. And it is a big pot. Right. Yes. So we want to get a good rolling boil. So we'll keep the lid on it. Ideally, you'd want to have it hot enough so you could actually keep the lid you off. You want the right? lid off because again, uh, the, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, complex uh, chemical reactions that are that's going on during the boil. A little bit too much to. Uh, you know, to, to talk about here, but uh, one of the things is that there are volatiles that you want to to uh, boil off. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're left into the uh, into the wort, they can affect the final flavor of your beer. Okay. So, so a, a nice rolling uh, rolling boil with the lid removed is the ideal way to do it. Yeah. Okay. And we are just about out of time, but uh, before we go, I guess we should let people know uh, the uh, beer contest. Oh yes, yes. Getting, getting closer. It's getting closer and. Uh, uh, anybody can join, anybody, any residents of Newfoundland and Labrador. It's uh, mm -hmm. sponsored by our, uh, our brewery lane. Mm -hmm. And uh, just drop by to either one of our stores on Mount Pearl or Torbay Road and we'll mm -hmm. you know, pick up a uh, entry, an form, entry form. And we'll give you all the details of what's required. Now there is an entry fee. There's an entry fee, yes. There's an entry fee of $5 okay. for, uh, for each entry. Okay. And there will be prizes awarded. Mm -hmm. And all the entry fees will be put together and we'll, you know, We'll be Put together a nice prize package yeah, for them. Yeah, nice prize package. And uh, we'll be, uh, so how many how many people have, uh, is this the type of thing that, that generally would get a lot of interest? I know that in some that you've attended before, you'll get uh, 20 or 30 entries. Yeah, uh, I've... Uh, how many have we gotten to date? Well, I've, uh, you know, I've been... Uh, I've been involved in competitions before, and you get 30 mm -hmm. to 35, but I expect to get far more with, uh, yep. with our... So there's going to be some contest. stiff competition out there, so you, you, oh, yes. this is, this is the, the type of beer that would do well in a competition, exactly. isn't it? Well, uh, again, uh, a lot of times all grain mm -hmm. brewers have an unfair advantage over malt extract brewers, so right. we, we are having two separate uh, divisions, mm -hmm. all grain and a mm -hmm. all, uh, malt extract. Right. Now, we're not going to finish this on, on this show. We're going to have to come back. We're going to bring this back for a third show. We'll carry on right where we've left off. Right. Uh, we've got just enough time to give you our address. Uh, if you've got any questions uh, regarding uh, home brewing, be it beer, making it from grains or a kit, wine from a kit, juices, berries, whatever you're doing, uh, right, drop us a line. Let us know what you're doing. And if you have any questions, you can uh, ask them, and we'll try and answer them right here on the show. We are the Brew Club at Cable 9. 541 Kenmount Road, P.O. Box 8596, St. John's, Newfoundland. And the address and the postal code rather is A1B3P2. And that's just about all the time that we've got left. Let's uh, take a look at this. There you go. That's the nice rolling boil that you want to have. And uh, that's uh, 
going good there. We're going to leave that for about another 10, 15 minutes. What are we going to do? We're getting near the end now. We're ready to put this in pretty soon into the uh, carboy. Right, yes. But we want to cool it down. Right, yes. We're going to... We're going to use a wort chiller to cool it down because uh, the idea is to cool it down as fast as possible because mm -hmm. once the boil is over, from then on, uh, as the temperature starts dropping, it's, you know, the, the, uh, you have to be very careful about sanitation. Okay, and we'll, we'll be talking a little bit about that next week right here on the Brew Club. And I'm just going to take some more of that hops. It's, it goes up there rather quickly, doesn't it? Oh, yes, yeah. And we'll, uh, we'll finish up this boil. And for Bill Reddy, I am Mike Pittman, and we'll see you here next week on the Brew Club. So long for now. Bye-bye.